Ken Ellison with IDI. I am here with Steve and Noe from April Air, and today we're going to talk about crawl space and moisture issues, specifically dehumidification in attics that we're now seeing with spray foam where we've tightened up those attics and that warm moist air is rising, and also how to address crawl spaces. This year IDI has had a pretty big focus that we're starting to go into the crawl space markets, so this is going to be one of the videos that ties in with that. Today we're going to look at the crawl space dehumidifier which can be used in either place and to start with that I'm actually going to start with uh, Steve here and we're going to talk about the unit itself. So Steve on this unit what would you say this unit is in terms of to a contractor? How easy is it to put in? This is very easy to install. Uh, there's nothing you have to do beyond placing it, plugging it in, putting it in some kind of a, a drain pan type solution to get the condensate away from the unit, set your relative humidity setting, and let it run. Okay, so now you brought up putting it into something for the condensate drain. Uh, one of the things you showed me is on the front here, we have the piece where the condensate drain comes out. Mm -hmm. So for that, we don't actually have to build a tray. There's actually a kit that comes with a pump and a small tray, or call it a micro tray, whatever you want to call it, but it has a float switch that will that will kill the machine as well. Is correct. that correct? Correct. It'll both carry away the water coming out of the dehumidifier and be wired into the unit. So if for some reason it's not carrying the water away, it'll shut the unit off so you're not going to cause any leaking issues. Beautiful. And that's very easy to install Very as easy well. to install. Okay, so guys, just think of it like this. We can't let water drain down from the attic into the house. We can't just leave it in the crawl space. So you've got to get that water away from the machine. Sometimes lines get clogged, things like that, and that's going to create a backup in the system. The next place it would do or would go would be to come out of the machine and onto the sheetrock or onto the floor and things like that. So that float switch just stops the entire process and turns the machine off. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. The other thing is, he talked about simply mounting it. There is a mounting kit for this machine. We've got a picture of it here. That mounting kit is very simple to put on. You're merely going to attach that to some uh, threaded rod or a way that comes down and then the kit will simply hold the machine up. At that point, outside of that, there are some differences in this machine and others. One you mentioned was the coil. Yes, so there's several differences for our dehumidifier compared to our competitors. Uh, the coil itself is all aluminum. Um, that's, Why is that? Sure, so a typical coil you would have aluminum and copper. And so having those two metals together, that can be a, a simply that fact that you've got two metals there can be a cause of some corrosion. So we've eliminated that. Also the aluminum is more corrosion resistant in general. So if you're in maybe um, an Atlantic seaboard state or the Gulf Coast where there's a lot of salt water just in the air, that certainly is not going to make the coil you know, impervious to that, but it will extend the life quite a bit. Great. Now, speaking of that, on this end, there is something that we have to do in terms of preparing this unit when we unbox it. Yes. Correct? Yes. We want to make sure that it arrives working as well as when we shipped it. So there's a bracket on the end here that keeps the compressor from moving too much during shipping. Okay. So it's simply a matter of cutting the zip tie and then removing the screws holding this bracket in place. You can discard that and then the unit's ready to run normally. Great, and one thing to point out at the same time, that's where the on-off switch is. Yes, when you plug it in, you'll see right above where the cord attaches, there's an on-off rocker switch. Make sure that's turned on. That way your display's got power, the unit can run. Great. So then, um, no, I, I've got a question for you because you brought something up, uh, not having one of these. If, if I've got a crawl space, you mentioned the Atlantic Seaboard, there, there are so many crawl spaces along the Atlantic Seaboard, especially the Southeast. So when I'm down there and I've got a relative humidity in a crawl space and I've got a dew point that down there can be 75 degrees. You said something about so many days before there's growth, biological yes. growth or mold growth. Yeah. So I explain that. So uh, some ways we're able to help out with the contractors. We have these little uh, literatures that we like using uh, and actually goes through how long it would take mold growth and based on relative humidity and temperature, you are able to get mold growth fairly quickly um, as soon as two days in some situations. Wow. Yeah. So you can get mold growth in two days in certain Yes. We'll call it microclimates. Yeah. 
Uh, and a lot of people, when we tell them that, they think maybe, hey, that's maybe a little too accelerated, it might not be correct. And one way to simply talk to your clients about it is when you um, talk to them about your summer. So if you're taking a hot shower in summer and you get out of the bathroom and you forget to turn the bath fan on, uh, very quickly you start seeing specks on the ceiling around the fan and that's where it kind of drives it home that, hey, this is something that can happen fairly quickly. If it's happening here, it's probably happening in my basement. Where you can't see it. Yep. So great. So back to the machine. I, I uh, want to talk about this for a minute. Besides the the pump and stuff like that, you've obviously got the hose that's going to go over to a sump or to the outside, Correct. something like that. Or drain the water away somehow. Yeah. So that comes with it. Mm -hmm. Then on this end of the kit down here, this is where we're going to do all of our settings. We're yes. going to turn it on and things like that. Yes. You want to explain that as far as the user interface? Sure. So. It's a very simple user interface. Uh, there's an on-off button here, so of course you would turn it on, and then you would adjust with the up and down arrows what relative humidity you wanted to maintain. And I would say we want to keep the ambient relative humidity below 60%, so 55% would be a good starting point. Okay, and so with that though, when you put a lot of things on at one set level, that means the machine's just going to turn on and off all the time. Is that, is that correct? So we've got quite a bit of sparks built into it. One of the features that we have built into this is, let's say we do set it for 55%. The unit, of course, is going to come on at, let's say, 56%, but it's going to run until it depresses that relative humidity three percentage points below that, so 52%. Okay. What that does for us is, is it gives us much longer run times, so it takes a few minutes for the coil to get cold, but it stays cold for much longer, so we get very efficient water removal then it hits that set point, then it's off for a very long time as that relative humidity slowly climbs back up. That long run time followed by the long off time allows the compressor to, the oil can return back to it. It's not going to be short cycling on off, on off, on off like other Perfect. dehumidifiers would. So you get a much longer service life out of the compressor. Great, now you mentioned something to me about that in terms of, you, you were talking about the smart technology in it. This also understands the dew point, is that correct? Yes. So there's times of the year that I may exceed something, but it's not going to run? Correct. So when it's cold um, in the space we're dehumidifying, you may find that the relative humidity is climbing up higher than you might like. But in reality, the air is so cold, there's not very much moisture in the air. So that's expressed by dew point. And so this unit will, stop running when it sees the dew point is 40 degrees. So it's determined there's not enough moisture in the air for me to need to dehumidify it. And so I'm gonna save quite a bit of money by not running when I don't need to. Great, I love that feature. So do I really need to be a technician with this? In other no. words, when I go out, how much am I going to wind up working on your unit? It's a great question. So we talked about how to install it then you would set up the relative humidity that you're looking for and then let it run. If there was a problem, uh, that would be indicated by there being an error code on the screen. Okay. And we've got a cover right here. If you take that off, there's a very simple summary of the error codes. Let me show the guys that, we'll get a close up of that real quick. So it's got the error codes on it. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice also on there, it includes our tech support toll free number and the hours of operation. So the goal would be, the unit's not working, you see the error code, you call up our tech support group, they help you troubleshoot it. Very simple, very easy. That's outstanding, but troubleshooting, how much work am I gonna do on this? Where, at what point do I have to become a technician? So we're not looking for detailed troubleshooting. Uh, it would be very, very simple things. Uh, the kinds of troubleshooting you would do with just a screwdriver. You might have to open the unit up, um, we would help you diagnose a problem, and then it would be very simple if you had to replace a component. But um, we would not be using, typically having to use things like a multimeter or anything like that. Great. Now, Noe, you'd mentioned something about this unit in terms of, you said something to the fact that I would only wind up working on it for five minutes or less. Anything other than that, you're pretty much gonna replace out the machine. Yeah, so our warranty's gonna run for five years for the cars bumper to bumper. What that means is on this part, if there is a replacement need, if you can't fix it with a screwdriver in five minutes, 
you're getting a new unit. That means that when you look at the serviceable parts, they usually have four screws or something. You take them out, you swap them out, and that's it. There's a Molex connector and you swap that out. If there's anything else that you can't swap out like that, most likely it means that some kind of refrigerant or a part we just don't want you working on. Okay. And at that point, we just go ahead and replace the unit. Beautiful. So now with this, is there also a way, if I'm going to connect it to my system, that some homeowners want control of this? Mm -hmm. I don't really want them down in the crawl space crawling around. Right. So at that point, is there a way to control this outside of that? Yes, Look, you hit the nail on the head. This is gonna be in a place we don't want the consumer to have to go to. And so what we do is we have this Model 76 remote control. And so this would be mounted somewhere convenient, perhaps by the thermostat. And then this would wire back to the unit and that, this would actually interface with this unit. So there's two-way communication between these two products. So you would see on here if the unit is running or not. You'd see what relative humidity it was maintaining in the space. If you wanted to, you could actually adjust that relative humidity set point. And then if there was a problem, that same error code we talked about here would be displayed on this screen. Do I need a wire going between the two? Yes. Or does it run as an actual remote? No, it's, it's a physical remote, but it's still wired. Okay. So I just want to mount it somewhere close, mm -hmm. up inside a wall, some low voltage wiring. Yes. Okay. Well, that makes sense. That's, that's great. So on this, uh, we've talked about the logic. We've talked about some of the other things. Obviously, we don't want to create a dielectric union type thing, so we don't have copper and aluminum mm -hmm. together. That's great. When this ships, it's pretty simple to unbox. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to mount it. So outside of that, Noe, you, you mentioned that you guys have some pretty unique consumer pieces. I, I yep. like to, this pad specifically, let's hold that up and show these guys and go ahead and explain to them what this is for. So this moisture pad, we like to use it. It comes in sets of 50. This would be free for any contractor that uses our product. Uh, we like to use it in conjunction with our field piece. Uh, this will allow you to read relative humidity and dew point. Uh, the, way like, the way we like to use these guys together is uh, as you're talking to a customer, you're able to take a reading by turning that on. Uh, you're explaining to the benefits of why we want moisture control in their home. And as soon as you get that reading, we usually allow it for like 30 minutes to get a full size reading. You're able to fill out this sheet with them. Uh, this goes over their humidity level. So say if you have it at 70%, you're able to go ahead and uh, relate it here to 70%. Uh, this will tell you that there will be um, more dust mites, more fungi, more bacteria growing in that area. You're able to fill this out with them. Go ahead and give them this copy, and then you get to keep this copy. It's a good selling tool. It keeps it with them, so it's always reminding them of what you talked about. And if they don't say yes at that point, you could have your follow-up technician remind them about this thing that they filled out. So it kind of keeps everyone talking the same thing and gives you an opportunity to sell it a second time when they may, maybe said no the first time. And this is beautiful. I, I, I don't want to glaze over this. The idea of having a psychometric pen or a, a pen that functions as a sling psychrometer, this is an incredible tool. Yep. I can go into any room in their house and get a relative humidity reading. I can check the dew point. I can compare it to the temperature outside. There's a lot of nice functions in here and it's real time. Yes. So I get to show the customer what their crawl space looks like. Yeah. There's, there's no smoke and mirrors, so to speak. So this is great. And you've got some other consumer facing yeah. materials here as well. You've got the full ASHRAE chart on here. Yeah, so you have a very similar one to the one we were talking about before. Uh, what we like to do with this is we're able to customize literature uh, depending on what you want. Um, you could put your logo here, laminate this, and kind of use it in the same way as a reusable one that you have on your clipboard at all times. Uh, but we do have a bunch of different ones that we like to uh, talk about with our customers, uh, specific for crawl space or basement. Um, so in this basement or crawl space one, um, you could talk about health, you could talk about preservation um, and comfort. So those are three things we like talking about in our literature. And we have them for basement crawl space um, oriented. And then on here, it's gonna be that same mold growth chart we were talking about. Uh, we refer to it as a days two mold. Um, and we have it on here. Uh, we'll have a bunch of different other literature if you were looking at product guides and stuff. That's gonna be more, more for you to learn about our product. Uh, but we have a lot of um, customer facing literature too that for most of it, we provide free of charge. That is beautiful, guys. Steve, there's also another thing on this. You'd mentioned sometimes guys can get into maintenance. Mm -hmm. That's, yes. That is a great thing for our industry 
because so often insulation's done once. We're, we're like the once and done type industry. And I really love it when contractors get to go back and forge relationships. That's where you get referrals and things like that. So I wanted to talk about the maintenance on this. You mentioned that here we, we have the filter. Yes. Okay, talk about that a little bit and, and how often we're gonna need to address this. So the purpose of the filter is to make sure the, the coil and the blower stay clean so you're getting that efficient dehumidification. Uh, this will notify you uh, about twice a year that you should check the filter. All you have to do is take the cover off like you did and then there's a filter in here, you slide it out. You'll see it's kind of dusty. You'll wash it out and you'll notice there's an airflow arrow. So you simply slide it back in like that, put the cover back on and then you reset the service reminder. Perfect. So it must be pretty easy. You did it from behind the unit. Yes. So that's great. So you mentioned that it'll show this twice a year. The truth is, though, you said I could probably get by with a once a year service on yes, this. Yes, once a year is probably all you ever need to do. Beautiful. Then I could look at this as something I either charge for or don't charge for, depending on what I'm looking for from that particular customer. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That is great. I, I uh, Before we close, I would like to say one other thing. They also make a product that is a an electrically controlled damper for makeup air for a home. You start thinking about the large hoods that are going into houses, but also the fact that we're using so many fans for makeup air. The weatherization programs are dictating fans for makeup air. These are constantly putting a building under negative pressure. Wouldn't it be nice to simply have a damper that would open up somewhere when those fans are running to allow more air to come into the home. As we get these buildings down to one air changes, one and a half air changes, it's pretty tough to just turn on a fan and hope that that will allow the right amount of air to come in. They've got a damper that's uh, wired up that you can have it open once the system turns on and looks for air. So that's our uh, presentation on crawl space dehumidification. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in, thank you for very bringing much. your thank equipment. You. We look forward to having a great relationship and educating a lot of contractors on your product. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you.